shocking news. A popular blogger, Madison, with 2 million subscribers, has been kidnapped in Thailand. It all happened when she accidentally met a girl from the same hotel. The next day, her documents were stolen, and after a couple more, she herself disappeared. It turns out that a seemingly sweet friend is a serial maniac who kidnaps blogger girls to run accounts instead of them and get paid for it. She took Madison to a desert island and took over her account. But the worst thing is that no one noticed the loss of the famous blogger. Stay tuned as we uncover the shocking details of this gripping case. Chill, this is just the plot of the movie. But do you really think it's impossible to pull this off? This video was created by SumSub, the verification platform. We keep cybercriminals out of your wallet, but more about us in a bit. The main idea of this movie isn't new. The term identity theft first appeared in 1964 and referred to fraud in which the perpetrator used the documents or credentials of another person to commit an offense. In this way, it was possible to forge a check or gain illegal access to the victim's bank account. In the US, stealing a social security number allows an intruder to get medical care that will be paid from the victim's insurance account. Later identity theft was used by telephone freaks to illegally access telephone networks and switchboards to make free calls and hooliganism. With the advent of computer networks, many freaks began using the same technology to gain unauthorized access to them. For example, they could call a company's computer center, get a system administrator on the phone, pretend to be a digital equipment corporation or IBM support staff, and tell them that a dangerous vulnerability had been discovered in the company's software. The vulnerability can be fixed without shutting down the computers, but the system administrator should grant the caller privileged access to the company's network. One of the most famous hackers, perfectly able to pretend to be another identity and gain the trust of victims, was Kevin Mitnick. Not a hacker for profit like we see today, but more a hacker for intellectual curiosity. He was not averse to rummaging through rubbish dumps near the offices of large companies in search of discarded documents containing names, personal details, phone numbers, and job titles of employees. It helped him defraud the security services of California's largest companies, but it also landed him in the dock for the first time at the age of 17. Mitnick went to prison several times, but gave up hacking to become a world-renowned information security expert. He has lectured around the world and written several best-selling books. With a heavy heart, we bid farewell to the fascinating Kevin Mitnick, who left us on July the 16th, 2023, aged 59. His spirit will forever be remembered and cherished. In the movie, an antagonist named CW used information from the internet to track down her victims. Is that really possible? Absolutely, yes. Today, there is no need for hackers and fraudsters to rummage around rubbish bins. They have a giant dumpster at their disposal called the internet. We leave a huge number of digital footprints on the internet when we register with different websites. Social networks also collect information about us. There are regular data leaks and personal information can become publicly available. Every time we sign up for online services or just browse the web, we leave a huge digital footprint. There are a number of OSINT services that can help to gather this data. Yes, anonymity is a luxury these days. Anyone can become a detective. Shut up. Let's simply run an experiment. Open Google in your browser and type your name there, adding the string site colon facebook.com. You'll get a link to your profile on Facebook if it exists and links to all mentions of you on that social network. If there are any people with that name, you can add a city to the query like this. This way, fraudsters can find basic information about you on the internet. Open your Facebook profile in an incognito or private window to see what information your Facebook is making public to the world. At a minimum, you can find out the age, place of employment, education details. Now repeat the search for Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. You'll collect a lot of information about yourself, right? When you post your photos on the web, you should know that they contain service metadata. This collects information about when the photo was taken, what device it was taken with, and the geographical coordinates of where it was taken. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram automatically remove metadata from photos, but Flickr and Tumblr do not. Fraudsters can extract information from your photos if it's available. This is how hackers can calculate the location of your home within a foot. 
If there is a recognizable place in the photo, a Google photo search will show where the photo was taken. Finding out your email address and phone number is not that difficult if the place of employment is known. If you leave your email address on websites, it can be found on the internet using Google or OSINT services. If not, this is where social engineering comes to the aid of attackers. Scammers may call your company's contact number found on the corporate website and ask how to get in touch with you. Also, they may send you a message in social media with a link to a fake authorization form where you enter your email or phone number. They may then call you after knowing some of the details. Imagine receiving the call. Hello, is this Mr. John Smith? Congratulations, you have won a 40% discount in Walmart in Lower Brooklyn where you usually shop. Could you please confirm your date of birth and your postal address to ensure that we call John Smith right? It is such a common name, you know? If you want to know how much information from social media can leak without your knowledge, watch the documentary The Great Hack by Netflix. Indeed, it's never been easier to forge documents or recreate someone's identity through the dark net, and face app programs are only getting more and more sophisticated by the day. Hi, this is Lucas from SumSub, and I'm here to tell you about how we at SumSub fight criminals and ensure authenticity of legitimate customers. This can be done by implementing SumSub's simple face authentication check, also known as liveness. SumSub's in-house liveness technology can detect masks, photoshopped images, or deep fakes using our own comprehensive AI solution. This software uses a people-friendly facial biometric approach that works equally well across the globe. It takes just two to four seconds to authenticate users, resulting in pass rates as high as 99%. Liveness can be used in various forms from detecting duplicate accounts to enhanced due diligence checks on suspicious user activity. For more information on how to implement Liveness, follow the link in the description below. Well, imagine an intruder got a lot of information about you. In the film Influencer, the villain blogged on social media on behalf of her victim. Is that possible in the real world? Unfortunately, a positive answer again. An attacker doesn't have to steal your smartphone. If they get hold of your email address and password using social engineering methods, they will change your password on social networks and compose as you. If a hacker gains access to your email account and you don't have two-factor authentication set up, he can gain access to messengers. There are a large number of applications that allow you to change the face in photos. We listed them in a previous video. Using these apps, the fraudster can post your new photos on social media for a long time, even if you've long been marooned on a desert island with no communication. The villain in the film used voice-altering software to communicate with the victim's lover. Such programs exist in reality too. They are often used by pranksters to call someone in President Biden's voice. Back in 2017, the Canadian startup Liarbird announced the world's first service with which you can fake the voice of any person. A minute sample is enough to train this system. The demo, posted on SoundCloud, shows some phrases spoken by the voice of Donald Trump. There are many applications that allow you to change your voice in real time, for example, while talking on the phone. But most of these applications only allow you to change the timbre, pitch, and other characteristics of the voice. To copy the voice of a real person, you need voice samples, and it's easier to do this with recorded voice messages. But there are also apps that can copy your voice from a short sample and play it back in real time, such as real-time voice cloning. So, if the villain has a sample of your voice, we have very bad news for you. What about the video with the victim? That's not a problem either with deepfake technology. The most popular free instrument is DeepFaceLab, and we have already talked about it. However, to create a high-quality deepfake, the neural network needs to be trained on a set of your photos. If you don't publish a lot of your photos on the web, don't worry. Deepfakes can also be distinguished from real videos by watching them in slow motion or frame by frame. It will show the truth. How to spot a deepfake? Pay attention to the edges of the head, especially the hair, ears, and tip of the nose. Neural networks are not yet very good at processing those areas, and you may see artifacts such as dark spots, different details in the areas of the face, and distortion of contours. Look at how the person in the video blinks. Blinking in deepfakes often looks unnatural. Sometimes deepfakes have different colored eyes. Neural networks are bad dentists. Deepfakes' teeth are often not drawn in detail and look like white stripes. Unnatural facial expressions can be a sign of deepfake. The fraudster may use a person of similar build and height, 
but you should still look out for peculiarities of the figure and distinctive features of the real person. Tattoos, moles and scars. Remember that neural networks are constantly evolving and the quality of deepfakes is improving. How about stealing the victim's money? If fraudsters get hold of your cell phone or SIM card and they know your bank card details, nothing will protect you from theft. To keep yourself safe, disable Face ID when opening banking apps. They should only open with a password or two-factor authentication. Also, set a PIN code lock on your SIM card to protect yourself if your phone is lost or stolen, and fraudsters try to install the SIM card in another phone to get the verification SMS. And block your bank cards immediately if a pretty girl suggests you visit a deserted island. But even if you do all of this, there is nothing to stop scammers from contacting your social media friends on your behalf and asking for money. With access to your social networks, information about you, your photos, voice and video, the criminal can become you. But why? In the film, the villainess was a maniac. She killed victims out of hatred. But what about in reality? There are several motives for identity theft. The first is, of course, financial fraud. This category includes obtaining bank card details to withdraw money and make purchases, and producing false documents to obtain loans. There have been cases of hacking social media profiles or creating clones and sending them messages to friends on behalf of the victim, asking them to send money to fraudsters. According to the Texas Attorney General's website, crimes like this happen regularly. So, Carlos from San Antonio said that his personal information was used by an ID thief to buy a sports car, open four credit card accounts, each with $10,000 lines of credit, open and spend about $2,000 on a Walmart credit card account, and rent an apartment. Fraudsters like the high life. The second one is committing illegal acts on behalf of another person, which can get the victim in trouble with the law. This can be either out of revenge or to hide the fraudster's real identity. Malcolm Bird was arrested in 2003 on a warrant for possession of cocaine. Although his name was eventually cleared, Bird learned that a criminal had used his name when he was arrested. He spent some time in jail before being released. The third reason is used by people fleeing from creditors or other types of persecutors, illegal immigrants. A stolen identity will help them hide away. In his book, Ghost in the Wires, Kevin Mitnick recalled repeatedly using data he had stolen from real people to obtain documents for himself in their names. This helped him hide from the FBI. The FBI was actually at my apartment. Medical identity theft is used by criminals, mainly to purchase prescription-only drugs, such as narcotics. Finally, clone creation. Often, fraudsters create fake pages of actors, musicians, or athletes on social networks to use a well-known name for illegal purposes. For example, to advertise pyramid schemes, online casinos, or other dubious projects. Or just for fun. As you can see, attackers usually have purely commercial motives for identity theft. Nevertheless, anyone can become a victim of a maniac. Keep this in mind if a pretty girl offers you a romantic trip to an uninhabited island while on vacation in Thailand. Take care of yourself.